Hello lovebirds, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today is going to be quite a special video because let me explain. Over a month ago, I got to go to Dubai for the very first time and as many of you have guessed already, it was for Huda Beauty. And I couldn't be more excited because I got to be a part of their new lifeline at Quick and Easy and it was such an experience. It was so freaking special. And in today's video, I'll be recreating my campaign look. So if you're interested, keep on watching. So let's start off with skin. So I've got this neat little trick that I do with Huda Beauty. Um, first off, I'm going to prime using the jelly primer. Jelly water? Water jelly primer. God, I'm on a roll today. Um, so I'm going to use two pumps on the back of my hand and I'm just going to distribute that all over the face. So for base, I've got a little theory about this. See, with flash photography, you want your base to be beautiful and even. You want it to have a little shine, but not too much shine. So my golden combination for this shoot was actually combining glowish foundation with the faux filter luminous matte in an equal part so that you get that even, even skin, but still have the radiance of glowish. So let's start mixing. I'll use a face skin perfecter because it's a beautiful, gorgeous buffing brush. And with the brush, I'm going to blend the two foundations together. See how good that is. So for color, I'm using Shortbread 200B and with Glowish, I'm using number two Fairlight. Now, one important thing that you shouldn't forget, especially when you're doing photography, is the tips of the ears. They tend to be a little bit more red. So dabbing that in. Now, one other part that is quite important is the neck area. It tends to be the palest part of your body because it doesn't catch the light as much as the rest of your body will. So whatever is left over on the brush, I apply on the neck area. There we go. Then I'm going in with a little shaping using Tantor in Fair. The nose, I actually do a very precise application because I do have a little hump right here. It just goes out to the side, not to the front, but I do want to hide that little broader piece of nose. That's that for the bridge. I'm just going to dab that in with my fingers because a little warmth from your hand can really create a beautiful blend. Little on the underneath of the tip of the nose. Blend that in straight away. And then whatever is left on your brush, you can use for the sides. And for a little shadow right on that bridge. This will create a little dip, giving you a little... One thing I want to make very clear, it's not that I dislike my nose, it's just that a lot of lighting will fade out any shape from your face. So if there's a really, really hard flash going off, make sure that there's shape in the face, either by not going in with a two covering foundation or by bringing shape back with a little bit of contouring. Last place I like to do a little bit of shaping is right underneath the lower lip, just because it creates a little extra fullness. Now, funnily enough, my favorite blush from Huda Beauty is actually a lipstick. So I'm going to be using this lipstick. This is a brand new one. It's called Promotion Day and it's the matte lipstick. But I think that cream products just blend into the skin so, so, so beautifully. So I'm just going to use a hint of this. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous shade. I'm just going to dip my brush right on in there. Make sure I wipe off any excess and distribute the product over the bristles by really blending it out on the back of your hand and then go in for application. Now as blush really wasn't the focus of this video, I just wanted to keep it to a hint of color without going overboard. So that's where a lipstick comes in really, really handy. See, it's just a hint of color. Now I will admit I did go ham with concealer. So let's continue with that. Okay, now with concealer, I'm gonna go in with two different shades. One that exactly matches my skin tone and one that is slightly too light so that I can actually shape a few of my shadow areas. So the first color I'm going to be using is number 10, Coconut Flakes. I'm gonna be using this wherever I feel like I need a little extra coverage. That obviously goes for inner corner of the eye. We can also use that to shape the nose a little bit more. Then right on the hollow of my under eye, 
and then a little on the outer corners of the eye, just so that we can really get rid of any discoloration. I'm just going to go in with a beauty blender to really set that into every little fine line. So rule of thumb with under eyes is do not swipe anything over that area because you will accentuate every fine line you might have. That is quite smashed. I'm bringing this down the sides of my nose so that we can really define that nose contour so that it looks like this area is connected a little bit more so your nose looks a little slimmer. I'm angling the beauty blender so that it doesn't mess up any of that blush we've applied. Just going to blend that in with the brush we previously used for any of the shaping we did so that it doesn't look like a stripe across the cheekbone. There we go. Now, unfortunately, at age 31, I still have quite a few imperfections around my mouth specifically. So I'm going to go into the outer corners of my mouth to give that a lift and to hide a few of those pimples. Now with a tiny detailer brush, what I'm going to be doing is hide a little bit of that hyperpigmentation above my brows. It's actually going quite well, but still I don't want that little dark spot right there. But I also don't want to colour in any of my brow hairs because they're so nicely bleached. Now, a brush like this is also perfect to go in with any spot concealing if necessary. So I have a little uh, vessel right here that just seems to want to peek on through. And it just looks like a red blob. So I really want to get rid of that. And then I've got a little darker spot right here. And a little darkness there. Now, whatever is left in darkness will be hidden behind brow hairs once I've brushed them upwards. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. Now I'm going to go in with the lighter shade, number 8B, Cotton Candy, just to lift up any of those shadow areas. Now, if I tilt my face downwards, you can still see the hollowness of that under eye. And I just want to hide that by using a lighter shade of concealer. This one I place on the back of my hand because I don't want to use too much. And I'll go in with a small eye blender just to dab in the colour wherever it's needed. And like magic, your under eyes have gone. Now to set everything, I'm going in with the Easy Bake Loose Baking and Setting Powder in the colour Pound Cake. And I'm really going to press this in uh, and maybe even slightly bake a little bit. Yeah, I actually did that. I'm just going to press the Beauty Blender right into the powder, tap off any excess, and then just really, really press it into the under eye area. Crazy face, but it works. And then I also like to take it onto the outer edges of the mouth to make sure that there's no shine or sheen making it look like you have a sweaty upper lip, for example. And then for the forehead, I'm just going to lightly dab off any of that shine in the center of my forehead and take it along the jawline as well. And I'm also going to lightly dust the upper lid and the sides of the nose. There you are. Now, it might look quite matte at the moment, but the beauty of it was that I was ready an hour earlier than they had expected me to be. So it really had some time to settle onto the skin, warm up all of the products and blend them all together to create a beautiful finish. Plus, we're going in with setting spray at the end where you really get a lot of that shine back. So don't worry about it being all matte. It will all settle in. So to get a glow on my face, a little bit of highlighter, I actually went in with the Light Glow Obsessions and I used that lightest shade, this one. However, I have been dying to try out the Nymph. So I'm going to go in with that one. I'm almost afraid to touch it, but I am going to. That's beautiful. I think that's really gold. That is really gold, but gorgeous. Okay, let's hop on in. Now, if you're scared that a cream product like this will mess up your base, don't be. As long as you keep dabbing it on instead of smearing it on, you'll be fine. Obviously, as I always do, also on the temporal bone. 
And I'm also going to go into the nose area with that little, little detailer brush. Just to get a little glow going on there as well. Oh, yeah. Now let's wipe off any of the excess. I'm going to use that bronzer brush because it's nice and fluffy. And just wipe away any excess powder. But as you might see, a lot of it has really set onto the skin. And it just gives you the longevity to be able to do a full shoot day like this. Uh, without having to change up your base. Also, one of the great things about this shoot was that we did a film shoot in the morning before I did any of the pictures. Now, with videos, with movies, you really want to be a little more matte than you would want to be for a photograph because a photograph just really really just goes well with a little bit of sheen and shine to the skin but on camera for videos it can often look like sweat and you really don't want that so i started off with quite a matte base and then during the day it just went softer and softer and it went shinier and shinier now before i continue on with the most important part of this whole video and it is a long one probably um but I'm first going to shape the eye a little bit because it is my guideline to do the eyeliner. So I'm going to go in with the matte and metal, matte and metal <laughs> melted shadows, and I'm going to be using the color cashmere robe, which is a the matte side is a gorgeous contoury kind of shade, which will help me transition the nose contour into the eye area and already create a shape for the eyeliner to go on top of. So I'm just going to grab a little bit off of the applicator, make sure it's nicely distributed over the bristles of the brush because you don't want to end up with anything blotchy after spending so much time doing your base. So I'm just going to go in with really nice short movements and really take it all the way up to that brow bone, like the underside of the brow bone, and then connect it to the nose area. Now, one of the reasons I'm already shaping my lid a little bit is because I'm going a little bit against the grain with my eyeliner shape later on. It's going to be a little bit turned down, but I don't want it to create a saggy face. So that's why I'm going in with a little bit of contour and to give it a little bit of a lift towards that temporal bone. And it's a little bit of playing with the contradictions in your face, which I really, really love to do but you need to know what to do before you're going to do it. There we go. Now, with the original Life Liner, which was absolutely amazing, you got the core pencil on the one side and a liquid liner on the other side. But to keep in mind, not everyone is really able to work with a liquid eyeliner like that. And it was discussed that might have been a little bit too pro. So they really wanted to create a very, very easy to work with eyeliner so that they could really help out everyone with their liner issues. Now, the beauty of this specific eyeliner is that it's so, so skinny. I mean, you can see how short the brush is, which is wonderful. It gives you a lot of control over where the brush is going. Um, and the tip is so incredibly skinny that I've heard through the grapevine that someone uses it to do their eyebrows as well. Not me, but someone. So let me just show you real quick how super nice and skinny this is. And then if you want to go for thicker, you just press down on it. Now, when I tried out this eyeliner for the first time, one of the most amazing things I found out was that it's actually smudge proof. It really easily removes from the skin. But when you're doing it with something dry, it will not come off and it will not smudge. Compliments to the chef because it's absolutely amazing. So before we get started with applications, there are three beginner tips that I want to give you. So the easiest way to do an eyeliner, especially if you have a little bit looser skin on top of your lid, is to divide the eye in two, right down the center and always work towards the middle. The second tip I want to give you is always make sure you support your working hand. You can do that either by placing your pinky on your face so that you really have a little bit of stability the other one is placing your other arm underneath your working arm so that you can stabilize like that or you can maybe even grab a book out so you can really easily lay your elbow on your desk with a little book underneath so you can really 
stably apply your eyeliner. Then the third and I think most important tip, and I still cannot conform to this tip, but it is very true. Your mental well-being really dictates how well you're going to be doing your eyeliner. So one is keep breathing, and two, the more nervous you get, the bigger the chances are that something is going to go wrong. So first off, let's start with filling in the lash line. Not winging it out, not doing anything special, just the lash line. Now, this looks weird, but trust me, it will help. A little impromptu tip. Um, the way you store your eyeliner will totally dictate how well you will be able to apply it. So make sure to store your eyeliner upside down. If you lay it flat like this, the flow of product will come a little more difficult. And if you store it upside down, the tip will always be filled with ink so you can really easily apply your eyeliner. This is a little bit of a pro tip. So I really love to work with a Ricky Superfine because it magnifies seven times so I'll be able to see any imperfection I have in that liner. It needs to be razor straight because you all know that if Huda Beauty is selling you a product, she does not alter that product in Photoshop afterwards. So you need to make sure it's actually razor, razor sharp. For pro artists, it's really handy to have a magnifying glass in your kit. So you can really see what the editor will see when it zooms up 400 times and sees your liner being all wonky. And how fun is it if the editor afterwards can say, you know, this was amazing. I didn't need to retouch your liner at all. This is usually the part where I stop breathing and I need to tell myself I do need to breathe. nerves they still wreck me i actually had quite a fun conversation with my boyfriend this morning about this and he was like you're so serious you're so serious when it comes to doing makeup you're so serious in the way you present yourself you might want to just lighten up a little bit and he said be funny that's a lost cause can you imagine the nerves i had that day on the ship <laughs> i think at some point, I told the film guy, because we were doing it on camera, and I said, I just, I just need a moment. I just need a moment to breathe. Just let me breathe for a moment, and I'll come back, and we'll just continue. Now, when everything goes to shit, and uh, it often does with me, there's only one thing that can solve the issue. <laughs> and that is my Kitco, my mini on-point Q-tips. So see how really, really skinny that is. And a little bit of Bioderma, which is always on my desk. And this is your surefire way to fix your problems. I mean, not all of your problems, but your liner problems. All right, there we go. So one other tip I can give you is that sometimes we don't really fill in the entire lash line because some of the skin on your lid it's actually hidden in between your lashes. So the one surefire way to solve this is just lift up the lid like that, close your eyes, and that way you can really get in between those hairs. There we are. I'm quickly going to do the second eye, that eye, and then I'll be back to explain how I defined my shape. Now, once you've finished doing that lash line, I'm going to show you how I define my shape. So, my eyes are a little bit more downturned than, you know, when you've got beautiful almond-shaped eyes. So, I usually go in with a little bit of a thicker line on the outer parts of the eye. Normally, I would go for a wing and then connect the wing to it. In this instant, however, Twiggy is kind of the inspiration for this look. So, I'm going with a 60s elongated but slightly downturned end of the liner so let's hop on in uh the one thing i'm going to do is just follow along the downturned line and just extend that a little bit so we are kind of giving, giving it a tip a wing end but it's just not as upright as it normally would be and then fill it in so to just compare, usually I would go in with this little liner brush from the Art Supply Store. And this is the skinniest I've been able to find so far. 
But if you look at the brush tip from the Quick and Easy liner, this is skinnier. It's like a single hair tip, which is absolutely amazing. And see, it's not really pulling anything down. It's just more 60. A little good to know also on this liner is if you're not using it or you're talking for a while or you're just laying it down, don't leave the packaging open because the formula is created to dry really, really quickly. So whenever you leave the cap open, it will dry out the tip of this eyeliner and that's something you absolutely do not want. Now to make things even more complicated, we're going to be doing a floating crease, which is exact replica of this curve but then above the crease line. So don't do it in the crease because that will mess everything up. It will stamp, it will look like a mess and it won't be visible if you open up your eyes. So do it above the crease. Uh, so yeah, we're going to map that out first. So one thing I really like to do is kind of dot where I want it to go. One other really nice guideline for you is your bone structure. So there's the eye socket bone right here, which is right before, above your crease which is actually a perfect guideline for you to follow along. So for me, it's actually quite visible because my skin is quite thin over there. Um, so if you follow along this line, nine times out of 10, it will be perfect. That's part one. Now, I usually skip the inner corner because that dot just really doesn't help. Uh, so I am going to dot the outer corner, which I want to slowly descend around the same kind of line as that lash line. However, there's a little bone here that goes a little further down. So you can see it's going a little further down and I wanna keep it right above there, see? Now I also want to extend it quite far because if we're talking 60s eyes, we are talking quite dramatic eyes. There, so let's do that line first. Now I know there are certain people out there who really know how to do it in one fluid motion. But let's be honest, we're all human and not every one of us is actually able to do that. I just need something with a really skinny tip and this is exactly that. And then I can just work in my little steps like I usually do. So once I know where my shape is, I'm gonna correct all of the imperfections. And then that's the moment you can actually lift your brows. If you're mapping out the shape, don't lift your brows because it will mess up the entire shape and the placement of the shape. Now, keeping the eyes relaxed again, I'm going to continue the shape we've created. And see, by slowly and steadily building this look up, you get a really nice result versus when I would go in with a one sweep motion, I usually have to clean up and the clean up usually makes far more of a mess than by going in very, very slowly and precisely. So. Um, yeah, this is just my way of doing my liner. Also, please don't expect me to do it precisely, precisely the same way as I did for Hidda Beauty, because I probably won't even be able to do it exactly the same way. Um, I just use the same techniques and see where I end up. So now that we've got the grueling part over with, it was grueling, trust me. It's always an issue getting something really nice and symmetrical. Um, it just takes a lot of time. All right, so now we're moving on to the lower lash line. Now I've got quite a lovely trick for this. It's just dotting where you want those twiggy kind of lashes to be at. So first off, I'm going to dot right, right, gotta look straight, right underneath the center. Then you wanna evenly space another dot right where you want your second dot. Now, I like to go in between the two eyes to make sure that I do it symmetrically. And I like to use a big reference point, so a larger mirror, or in this case, my monitor. Now, if there's going to be one in the center, or uh, in the inner corners of the eye, I'm not going to dot it yet. I'm just going to see how it turns out before I move along to that inner corner. I believe I actually didn't do it on the shoot itself, so zooming you guys in as far as I can. So if you're doing this lower lash, don't pay any attention to that lower crease. Everyone's got their crease because there's an eyeball in your eye, so don't worry about it, but don't try to fill in that gap because you want it to look good with your eyes open. We're not looking up into the sky for the entire time you're talking to someone. And then just build a little triangle 
on the upper part of it. There's also a hint of a clockwork orange in there, if you think about it. Love that. Maybe I'll just do a really tiny one there. So now that we're finally here, it's time to do lashes. So I'm going to curl them first. I've got a Laura Mercier lash curler that I really, really love. Um, please don't forget to clean it after every use because there might be a little makeup residue from your previous look. And then I curl it in stages. I'm going in with legit lashes. I'm going to start off with the volume side and then finish off with the length side. Curl and length. Look how gorgeous those lashes are. And that was very important because we were actually doing macro shots of the eye. And God, I was nervous about that. But so important to have your lashes really nicely separated. Next up, curl and length. What I love about this one is that it has those silicone bristles that really separate the lashes. Now, because the look is so traumatic, please do not forget about the lower lashes. They don't need to be accentuated all the way through, but they do need to be accentuated at the base. And now by giving the lower lashes a little bit more attention, it feels like it's all blending together. So it is more of a spiky lower lash line instead of only drawing on the lashes. Now, to finish off, we're doing lips. Now, I'm going in with one of my favorite combos so far. Um, the one thing I wanted to keep in mind for this shoot was that lips did not have the priority in the photo. So when you're looking at a focal point, it needed to be on the eyes and not on the lips. So what I did was do a little trick with my lip liner to make it look like there wasn't any lip liner. So let's hop on in. So what I did was accentuate the cupid's bow and the lower part of my lips and then fill it in with my lipstick. I'm using Lip Contour 2.0 in the color Honey Beige, by the way. Then for lips, I'm going in with Cream Lipstick in the color Angel, which is just, it just, it's the perfect amount of pale pink to make it look 60s without having that really unhealthy kind of look. I'm going to grab onto a lip brush to make sure that all of the edges are nicely, perfectly aligned. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the lipstick on the brush, go in with my magnifying mirror again, and then just sketch out the outer edges. Now, to finish off the look, I'm going in with Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist because I want to tie everything together. I am going to protect the eye look, by the way. I don't want the T-zone of the face to get any more glowy than it is because it's already kind of melting together, but I am going to protect the eye look and see how beautifully radiant that is. That will definitely show up on a camera. I'm sorry for the outro you'll have to deal with playing puppies. But I just wanted to recap because I, at the beginning of this video, I, th I felt like I was going to tell you all the ins and outs of what the shoot was like. And for some reason, I forgot everything. I just want to mention that being able to work with such an incredibly talented team of people who have so much kindness and so much love and passion for what they do, it was an absolute joy to be a part of this. Also, meeting Huda was exactly as I thought it would be. Um, it's absolutely weird and crazy and ridiculous because... You know, when I was a 14, 15 year old, I was already watching her on YouTube. And it is a crazy experience to see someone come out of your screen and you see them in real life. And then on top of that, they're absolutely amazing and kind and enthusiastic. And so happy that you're there, that you're like, holy shit balls, didn't even know she knew that I existed. And to have her appreciate what I do is even even more amazing. Now, in all honesty, I haven't seen the end shot yet. I haven't seen what it has become yet. But I have been able to take a peek at what the photographer was doing and see on screen what the eyeliner was looking like. And I cannot wait to see the end result. But by the time I'm posting this, I will have the end result and I'll post it as the end image. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you if you want to do like a Q&A live session on this platform just to talk about this whole experience, let me know. If you want to do something else, let me know as well. Thank you so, so much.
to Huda and to the Huda Beauty team for having me on this incredible adventure. Go try it out. Go try out the quick and easy eyeliner. Sending lots of love. Bye.